Which agency will decide my immigration case? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States at our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. In today's video, we're going to talk about the alphabet soup that is the federal government. What do I mean by that? Well, the federal government loves their acronyms. They love their abbreviations. And you might be confused about all the different agencies that are handling your case. So we're going to talk about each of those abbreviations. We're going to talk about what their roles are in the hopes of educating you about where your case is and when it might be decided and how the process is going to work. Historically, the one agency that was in charge of everything related to immigration was the INS, the Immigration and Naturalization Service, the INS. And that was the agency that did everything. They did green cards. They did citizenship. They did non-immigrant visas. They did immigrant visas. They did everything. So a lot of times you'll hear older immigration lawyers or older people call it the INS, but it hasn't been the INS since around 2002. In 1983, in order to make things a little bit more independent and to have the immigration judges be separate from the INS, they created the Executive Office for Immigration Review, the EOIR. When you hear about immigration court or deportation court, you may hear of the Executive Office for Immigration Review or the EOIR. The EOIR is the immigration court. That's the system under the Department of Justice. So they wanted to separate out the immigration court from the people that are trying to deport you, the EOIR from uh, the INS. That was back in the early 80s. After 9-11, there was a huge shakeup uh, at the cabinet level where they added a whole new cabinet position, and that is the Secretary of Homeland Security. The Department of Homeland Security was born after 9-11, and they took a lot of government agencies and put them under DHS. So INS had previously been part of the Department of Justice. Now they became part of the Department of Homeland Security. The DHS is in charge of keeping our country safe and protecting our borders. So you can see how the immigration piece plays into that. And so at that time, DHS decided to separate out the INS into two different agencies. One was U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service, CIS, or USCIS. USCIS is the agency that now processes and handles claims for green cards, for citizenship, for visa extensions, and for all immigration-related petitions where people are, are asking for affirmative relief. They're asking for a benefit. They're asking for a green card or citizenship or something tangible that they're asking for as opposed to a defensive maneuver. A defensive maneuver would take place with ICE. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, that's the other part that INS was split up into. The Immigration and Customs Enforcement is the part of the government that's charged with finding people who are in the United States without permission, either because they entered without inspection or because they had a visa and they overstayed. ICE is in charge of deporting those people, or at least initiating the proceedings. So ICE are the people that knock on people's doors, who arrest people, and then take them to the Executive Office for Immigration Review, and they do that by issuing an NTA. So you can see all the letters that we're talking about. The NTA is the notice to appear. A notice to appear is the paperwork that an ICE officer would give someone to tell them that they have a court date coming up at the EOIR. So you see that? ICE gives out the NTA to send you to the EOIR. We really are talking about lots and lots of letters. Of course, USCIS, if they find that someone is in the United States and their immigration benefit is denied, USCIS could notify ICE, and then ICE would issue the NTA, or actually USCIS can also issue an NTA and, and send you to immigration court at the EOIR. So that's for people who are inside the United States. Now let's talk about cases in which the beneficiary, the person who's going to get the immigration benefit, is overseas. Now in this scenario, you're actually dealing with two different departments. Uh, the first department is Homeland Security, like we talked about. USCIS is part of that. And then the second agency is the Department of State. So your application starts basically the same. You file paper forms with USCIS. And your case can be pending there for months and months. Once USCIS has approved the petition, then it is sent to the State Department. Now, the State Department has several different parts of it that handle the, the actual immigrant visa. And your case will start after transfer from USCIS at a place called the National Visa Center, the NVC. So your case is pending at USCIS for months and months. Once it gets approved, it then starts at the Department of State. 
And this is at the National Visa Center, which is located in New Hampshire. And you can think of the National Visa Center as sort of the service center for the State Department. In other words, where all the cases go, where they get started, and when they, where they are initially processed. They will be initially processed at the NVC in New Hampshire, and the agency will then start the process of working towards your immigrant visa for the beneficiary overseas. The National Visa Center will do that by having you pay some fees and fill out some forms. The one nice thing about the National Visa Center, the NVC, is that they are pretty electronic. They don't do much on paper. They are pretty paperless, and that makes life easier. The hard part is, is that you're basically starting over with a whole new agency, a whole different branch of the government, and that means that you have to tell them a lot of things that you already told them. In other words, you're going to have to tell them all about your spouse again. You don't have to necessarily reprove the relationship, but you do have to now take all that information that you provided previously on paper, turn it into electronic form by filling out the DS-260, and then uploading a lot of documents that the State Department will need to process your case. So your case will be at USCIS for a while, then at the National Visa Center. Once the NVC is satisfied with your submission and that you've given them all the evidence and paid all the fees and that everything looks in order, they will declare your case DQ'd. DQ'd means documentarily qualified, DQ'd. And once your case is DQ'd, then it is put in line for an interview at the consulate. So a consulate is a place, uh, it's an office of the United States in other people's countries. In other countries, we have embassies and consulates, and the consulate is the agency or the part of the agency that's going to handle the actual issuance of the visa. That all happens in your country, and that all depends on how backlogged or busy the embassy or consulate is. Sadly, because of COVID and because of Donald Trump's assault on the State Department, these embassies and consulates are very backlogged, which means that your case is going to be parked at the NVC in DQ status for quite some time before your case is then sent to the embassy. And once you have your embassy or consulate interview and your case is approved, then you'll be on your way to coming to the United States. So that's how the agencies all work together. Once the uh, visa is issued and you come through the United States, you're going to deal with Department of Homeland Security one last time as you come through CBP, Customs and Border Protection. They're going to make sure that your visa was properly issued. They're going to take some paperwork from you, and they're going to let you into the United States. And that's the last agency that you should deal with on an immigrant visa. So we've talked about USCIS. We've talked about ICE. We've talked about CBP. We've talked about the EOIR, which is the Executive Office for Immigration Review. We talked about the DOS, which is the State Department. And we talked about the NVC. You got to keep all your initials straight. This takes a little bit of time for immigration lawyers to learn about all the different agencies, all the different handles, all the different people that are touching your case. And we hope this makes sense. We hope it makes sense for you, that it helps clarify a little bit and that it helps you uh, file a stronger case and hopefully put yourself in a position to get your case approved. If you have questions about this or if you need more information, feel free to give us a call 314-961-8200. You can email us at info at hackinglawpractice.com. Be sure to join us in our Facebook group. It's called Immigrant Home. We have new people joining every day. And then we have our YouTube channel where we are answering questions and shooting new videos all the time. We're also going live in there on our Immigration Answer Show, usually Monday through Thursday. You can join us and we'd love to see you there and answer all your immigration-related questions that we can in under an hour. Thanks a lot and have a great day.